I sometimes tell my wife that uh, I really miss uh, Salt Lake. It's hard to imagine a better place to grow up. The freedom uh, was amazing, at least when I grew up, and also just the access to nature, the, just so many opportunities. I mean, you know, not just the standard ones of playing soccer or, or baseball or being on the swim team. You know, I did all those things, but just the opportunity to go into the mountains. My parents divorced when I was young, um, so I spent most of my youth with my father. I immediately enrolled him in um, Boy Scouts. I immediately enrolled him in uh, karate, and I uh, almost immediately got him a dog. We, we went to Judge Memorial, and he was a co-valedictorian uh, with another friend of mine. He had opportunities all over the United States to go to school wherever he wanted to go. I'm a very practical person. My father's a very practical person. It may go to his Scottish roots, but I really, I think that it's something very, very special about the University of Utah and about Salt Lake City that it can't capture anywhere in the world, as far as I've seen. Maybe there are places like Salt Lake City, but I haven't found them yet. The University of Utah put me in the position where I am today, and it's easy to trace it back. That first year with um, Ann Engar in, in a course taught by, uh, through the honors program. He was always engaged, always in class, always talking about the ideas, always thinking, always talking to others about it, and he was just a joy to teach. I took a variety of courses in, in accounting and uh, became involved um, in a student group called Beta Alpha Psi. It's a, an accounting honor society, and through that I did a, a variety of things. One, I got involved in um, income tax. I, uh, I first uh, uh, volunteered for and then ran the local um, volunteer income tax assistance program, VITA. But another aspect was um, a writing competition. The national organization at that time sponsored a manuscript contest. And so I took a stab at it. He brought a, a draft by. And what I produced was absolute crap. I made some suggestions on, on how it could be improved. Though I'd never taken a course from him, and though I don't think he really knew me. He didn't tell me to go away, never come back, because he was embarrassed by what I'd put on, in, on a piece of paper. He basically challenged me. He just worked really hard on this and, and submitted, submitted the manuscript, and uh, he ended up winning first prize in the, in the nation. When I look back at the University of Utah, there were more moments like that. These, um, you might know, call them guardian angels, who appear and um, you know, guide me on the way. I showed up at the University of Chicago in their law school, and honestly, I was intimidated. You know, there were like all these incredibly bright students from around the country, um, and yet at the end of the year, I received an award for uh, outstanding work in legal writing and research. And what so shocked me about that award is that one, I didn't expect it, and I didn't think I had to try that hard to do the kind of writing that was expected of me. And I attribute that all to the University of Utah. Ed was a law clerk to both Judge Richard P Posner on the Circuit Court of Appeals and then on the Supreme Court of the United States to Justice Scalia. But Justice Scalia relies on his clerks, such as me, to meet with him the day before an argument and spend a few hours with him debating what are the facts of the case or what is unique about this case or what are the consequences of ruling one way or another. And so it, it's, it's like a sparring match. So half my time is teaching, of course, as a law professor. And then I teach courses on contract law, uh, bankruptcy law. I teach some seminars on corporate reorganization. I teach several seminars on what's called law and economics, hearkening back to Boyd Feldstead and the Bureau of Economic and Business Research at the University of Utah. I've made law and economics my specialty. Half my time, maybe more, is spent teaching, because if you, I do a lot of what Bob Allen did, which is working with students on their projects, their papers, uh, coaching them through that. But roughly the other half of my time is on scholarly work. My scholarly work is almost exclusively focused on bankruptcy, most often corporate reorganization, and by and large my work is um, empirical, using statistical techniques. One project, for example, I'm working on with University of Utah scholars in the medical school is to think about how unexpected health traumas contribute to bankruptcy. 
So we've taken some data on car accidents as a surprise event, causing both property damage but also health trauma. But most recently, which is why um, uh, I testified before Congress recently, was on the mortgage crisis. I'm Ed Morrison, professor at Columbia Law School. Last year saw 2.25 million foreclosures. Another 1.7 million are expected this year. Without prompt action, the foreclosure crisis will get much worse very soon. Over 4 million Americans are now at least 60 days late on their mortgages. He was in love with learning and wanted to investigate every aspect of a topic and to master it and know it thoroughly. At the same time, he was very modest and open to suggestions and ideas. He's really smart, but a lot of people are really smart. Uh, in addition to that, He's, he really works hard and really aspires to excellence. A college can't give uh, some, someone ability that they don't have, but they can help an individual achieve everything that that ability would let them achieve. And I think in Ed's case, it surely must be the case that the college he went to shares a, a role in his ability to take the gifts he had and move as soon in such a great direction as Ed has moved. As a result of staying here at the University of Utah, he lived close by, he could throw himself into whatever he chose to do. He knew that he was going to get a really solid footing and foundation here at the University of Utah. He knew that if he did well and was able to excel here, it would be a launching pad to a career of his choosing. He's spoken uh, many times about the University of Utah in terms of just um, the attention and the support he got from the faculty there. Uh, I feel like for Ed, I mean, there were so many professors that assisted him, guided him, really worked with him on research projects. So I, I think the U uh, fulfilled everything that I told him I thought it would for him. Uh, I loved the school and the, the faculty and the diversity here was just extraordinary. And then the, the opportunity to be up in the mountains and camping and skiing and, and all that. I'd give uh, the, U, the U an A plus for what they did for my son. If I have to sum up the University of Utah experience, it's, what's amazing about it is that it is what you make it. There were some guardian angels along the way, just some amazing people who just stepped in and devoted a lot of themselves. But it was also a place where I could navigate my own path.